For our first turn of 2022, we are looking into the past to get a glimpse of the future. Welcome to the Oculus, aka Meta, Quest 2 Teardown. The end of 2021, moving into CES of 2022, brought us a giant heap of Metaverse-related content and products. Which brings us to this, Facebook Oculus Meta's cordless $300 VR headset. This was originally released in 2020, but we just never got around to taking it apart. What makes the Quest 2 special is that it doesn't require any additional cables or hardware to work. Where other headsets need a high-end PC, extra cameras to track your movements, and hours of setup and calibration, all you need with the Quest 2 is this headset and these controllers. And that is key to Meta's game plan to get everyone hooked on the metaverse. They see this as the next smartphone boom, and to get everyone on board, this needs to be simple and cheap. Simple and cheap on the outside does not mean simple and cheap on the inside though. Crammed into this headset is basically a 2020 flagship smartphone, plus a bunch of extra cameras, sensors, and other VR stuff. To get started, I'll remove six T2 screws from under the foam padding on the dark side of the headset. That allows me to remove the plastic trim piece that goes around the lenses here. Then five more screws hold the face of the light side in place, and now we can get an idea of just how dense this thing is. Every single inch has been packed with something. At this point, I would hope to be able to see an easy way to remove or disconnect the battery, but I'm not seeing anything. Not being able to quickly replace the battery is a bummer because like everything else with a battery, this will eventually need a replacement. Thankfully, you can at least use it while it's plugged in. Thanks to this user-created guide on iFixit, I do actually know where the battery cable is. To disconnect the battery, I just have to remove these three screws and this metal bracket, then disconnect this cable here. After that, I'll remove this big black antenna with eight more Phillips screws, then the fan, and this cute little heatsink. Next, I can start disconnecting cables and free the motherboard. Remember, this thing is basically just a smartphone. Look at how tiny the board is. Finally, I can pull the rest of this out of this white plastic housing. The screen and eyepiece assembly holds onto those four cameras and has a really interesting adjustment mechanism for the IPD or interpupillary distance adjustment. Watch that tiny gear move as both eyepieces slide back and forth between their three positions. I said it was interesting, but it's definitely not precise. This is no doubt one of the cost saving measures that Oculus took to get to this $300 price point. And while most people probably won't notice, I wasn't able to get a perfect IPD adjustment which led to me feeling nauseous after each gaming session. In the housing, we have the two speakers, and it looks like they speak through the rotating arms. We'll have to check those out in a minute. Then we finally have the battery, stuck to the top of the headset with six Phillips screws. This is an awful lot of disassembly to get to a battery replacement, but at least it's not glued in place. This 14.3 watt hour cell should give you just over two hours of cordless VR gaming. Not bad, again, considering all the different tech this little cell powers. The speakers have a bracket screwed in around them, and then some fiddly little metal clips. Finally, removing the two black plastic pieces lets you remove the whole speaker arm. Building the speakers into these arms is a really clever design trick that allows them to take advantage of this extra space to make the speakers bigger, and also pipe the sound closer to your ear for better immersion. The lenses come off by sliding out the adjustment rails. These are Fresnel lenses, which we've seen in several VR headsets. The circles you see in the glass here achieve the magnification and immersion effects of a thicker, heavier lens without the weight or the bulk. On our way to the screen, I'm going to pull one of these cameras off. A few screws hold it in place, and holy cow, that is quite a bit of thermal paste. These cameras are running full time while you're beat sabering, so no doubt they heat up. Speaking of cameras, now that we're most of the way through this thing, let's talk about how Oculus built this to track movement without any external sensors. That's the most interesting part of this headset for me. Devin Coldaway, a reporter at TechCrunch, got a pretty straight answer from the CTO of Facebook a few years ago, which we'll link in the description below. Basically, the answer boils down to three things. They're running the inertial measurement chip we saw on the main board at a very high frequency, leaning heavily on Facebook Meta's machine learning computer vision algorithms, and they spent a ton of time carefully tweaking the output of the entire system to closely match their old systems that did use external sensors. I'm still trying to get to the screen here. I can remove the screen assembly from the metal shield with these screws, but it looks like the screen is glued to this black frame. Hold up. A quick pull on one of these tabs reveals some stretch release adhesive. It breaks a few times during the pull, but there are several tabs all connected to the same adhesive perimeter. This is seriously cool. I get so excited about stretch release adhesive because it's basically a sign that the design team actually thought about the removal procedure. 
I am curious to know how many of these screens actually break or fail because it does seem like this would be pretty protected inside the headset. But hey, anything could happen in the metaverse, right? Finally, here's the screen. It's basically a smartphone LCD display with the non-important parts blacked out, which you can barely see here under the right reflections. This LCD is sort of a sidestep from the original Quest headset, which had an OLED panel. That panel was slightly less high resolution and had a lower refresh rate, so I'd say this is a pretty good trade-off. That's the end of this quest, and we've learned that the future of VR can totally be cordless, as long as you've got some computer vision algorithms to lean on and you're smart about your battery placement. I am happy to say that this thing is decently repairable, though it does take a while to get to the all-important battery and there are a bunch of fiddly parts and clips along the way. 